Measurable Physical Properties of Matter. In this video, you are going to learn about the different measurable properties, but you will also learn the formulas for identifying them and what units we use to label them. Matter is anything that takes up space, volume, which we'll talk about later, and has mass, which we will be talking about pretty soon. So physical properties of matter can be observed or measured without changing the substance. So we already focused on observable, so now we're going to focus today on measurable properties of matter. So what we know is if it's measured, it's going to have a number. So when I have these graduated cylinders, they're 100 milliliters, 200 milliliters, 500 milliliters, 2 liters, so on and so forth. I get a specific number. The same goes for when I find mass. In grams, I'm going to have a specific number. So measurable properties of matter give me a certain numerical value. Mass is our first measurable property of matter. So we have a saying, and you need to remember this. Mass always stays the same. So mass always stays the same, no matter where I'm located. Earth, the moon, Jupiter, any asteroid, my mass will stay the same because it's measured in grams, which is abbreviated with a lowercase g. It doesn't change. It's not affected by anything. So no matter where I'm located, my mass stays the same. So mass is measured using balances. So this is probably what you were used to when you were younger and to find mass. And now that you're older, we use triple beam balances. So in your chart for measurable properties of matter, I need you to write mass. And I know this is shocking. Spelling counts. Weight is another measurable property of matter. So weight is very different than mass, and a lot of people get them confused. So the difference between weight and mass is weight has a G factor. So the G factor is gravity, and gravity changes depending on where we're located. So weight is measured in pounds. The abbreviation is lowercase l and lowercase b. And we measure our weight using a scale. So let's say we live on Earth. Huh, shocking, we do. And I measured my weight. If I then went to the moon, this is what's kind of cool, my weight would, on the moon would be one-sixth of what it is now. Would I have technically lost any weight? No. It's that G factor again. It's the gravity is so different on the moon than on Earth, and that's why my weight appears one-sixth of what my weight is on Earth. Now add weight to our measurable physical properties of matter chart. Yep, spelling still counts. Next we're gonna talk about three measurable properties of matter. Length, width, and height. So all three of those, length, width, and height, are measured using metric units kilometers, meters, centimeters, millimeters. And the reason we use metric units is because it's a base 10 system. So if you ever look at a meter stick, you'll notice that the tens tend to be darker or even larger than all the others. So in a meter stick, it goes from zero to 100 centimeters, which is one meter. So on the diagram down below, we see the length is that front side facing us. The width, all right, kind of is on the side, and then the height is from the bottom to the top. Now in your measurable physical properties of matter chart, I need you to add length, width, and height. And yep, spelling still counts. Volume is our next measurable property of matter. So volume is how much space an object takes up. All right, so volume has the formula of length times width times height. And if we are only using variables, it's V equals L times W times H. And volume is measured in cubic centimeters, represented by CM for centimeters, and the cubed, it's kind of like a flying three, 
or it's also measured in milliliters, which is a lowercase m, capital L, which is for the liquids, and cubic centimeters is for solids. So here's an example of where I would use that formula of length times width times height to find volume. So that's obviously a solid. So that's why I would use the label cubic centimeters. Here's how I would find the volume of an irregular object. I'd fill a graduated cylinder up with a certain level of water, and then I would put, um, and I would obviously mark what that number was at, then I would drop carefully my object into the graduated cylinder with that 50 milliliters of water, and I'd see how much it rose. So I'd have to find the difference of, 75 milliliters minus 50 milliliters. Now what's kind of cool, if you ask me, is this is a solid, so I can't put it in milliliters, which is liquid. So what I know is one milliliter of water is equal to one cubic centimeter. So if I have 25 milliliters for the volume of this rock, I know that 25 milliliters would be equal to 25 cubic centimeters. So I know it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which makes my life as a scientist much easier. Now here's the easiest way to find volume of a liquid, because liquids are easy. All we do is we pour the liquid into any of these uh, measuring tools, beaker, graduated cylinder, and I just see how many milliliters it equals. Now we're going to add volume to our measurable physical properties of matter. Guess what? Spelling counts. Now density is our last measurable property of matter, and it's probably the hardest one to grasp. So density is the amount of mass per one unit of volume. So density's formula is density equals mass divided by volume. So if I use variables, it's D equals M divided by V. So we measure this in grams per, that's the division sign, cubic centimeters. And that's labeled with grams per cubic centimeters. So what we know really density tells us is something's going to sink or float. If something is less dense, it's going to float. And if it's more dense, it's going to sink. We will get into this a lot later in the school year. So if I have three different forms of copper, pipes, wire, coins, they all will have the exact same density, meaning the exact same grams per cubic centimeter. So I've taken the same volume of copper pipe, the same volume of copper wire, and the same volume of copper coins. So what I know is when I find the mass of the copper uh, pipes, I find the mass of the copper wire, and I find the mass of the copper coins, and I divide it by what that volume is, because volume is how much space it takes up. So it's gonna take up the same amount of space if I have the same volume. I'm going to get the same number of grams per one cubic centimeter. Now this is a hard concept, like I said, so we will do a few labs to make sure we completely understand density. Lastly, add density to our measurable physical properties of matter. Yep, -er. spelling still counts.